If you are thinking of a bank that takes care of customers' needs by providing quality services with flexibility, reliability, and innovation, think Trust Bank Limited. With Trust Bank Limited Mobile Banking, you enjoy services such as balance inquiry, mini statement, funds transfer between accounts, exchange rates, mobile airtime top up, stop ATM card, checkbook request, and pin change. Our real-time gross settlement allows the customer to instruct the bank to transfer funds from their account to another account at another bank. Our expertise and experience in international banking is both legendary and the envy of the market. Retail banking, one bank, different amazing packages. Whether you are interested in savings account, current account, time or fixed deposit account, lending or overdraft, our team of dedicated staff is always ready and willing to help you out with your transactions as you wish. Corporate Banking Trust Bank Limited offer the most convenient services for deposit accounts, credit facilities, trade finance, bond and guarantee and foreign currency account. With e-banking, you can make electronic bill payments and online banking and enjoy 24-hour access to your cash with our ATM. With the largest network of branches and agents, we give you the convenience to receive funds as you please. Trust Bank Limited, proudly Gambian. Fay lempo warugal la si kepo ko hamne domi reo minga ak nyufi deke. Bo feke ne chi at mi sa kom kom wesu na nyar fuka ak nyenti june dalasi. Mbete wer buneka dinga amluto lo si nyari june dalasi. Lempo silangurgi di sukande ku ngi lige yokute reo mi. GRA moy banghas bunguri gambia sas ngi rumu feye ku lepo lui lempo chi bi reo mi. Betak na GRA di yegal fey kati lempo ine warugal la pur nyu fey lunyu nan withholding tax on contract payment. Ma nam bepa contract bu way joxe te ci bi rew mi lañu tokkon xali ci contract bi ngeen nangoto war nga ci wañi ci xayma témer bu neka fuka bu féké na contract bi dekku ci bi rew mi bu boba di nga waro wañi témer bu neka fuka ak jurom li moy lempo buñu nan with holding tax on contract payment li moy lempo bi nga xamné yow mi joxe contract waru gal la nga wol batiku dem fey ko ci makani diaré tax office bu la gëna jégé mbété ci banki diaré jagléel pour fey lempo war nga djébal lempo bi ci diri fuki fan ak djurom ganaw bi nga wagné ci xali ci contract bi amut ben contracto bu ñu téggel fey lempo bi xana mu fekk né nguri gambia ñoko djégalé bolé ci project yi nga xamné mbotaay ndimbali ñokoy dépense jra di fey ku lempo ngir yok for the first time in the history of the gambia gambia printing publishing corporation proudly introduces the billiomatic exercise book printing machine the machine has the capacity to print more than 20,000 books per hour. Yes, 20,000 books per hour. It also prints magazines, newspapers, calendars, flyers, normal books and all kinds of printed documents plus items at affordable prices. With the Bilomatic printing machine, GPPC can now render high quality and non-size restricted printing service supply across the sub-region. Rush now and partner with GPPC for all your public and private printing service needs. Print with us today and you'd be offered highly professional, reliable and efficient service delivery by our team of experts. The Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation is here to meet all demands and is reliable at all times. For more info, contact us on 437-4493 or 437-4402. GPPC is Gambian and it's yours. Communication, connectivity is everything. 
We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gumsol's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gumsol. Again to our show, and sorry for that interruption. Soon, guy, the technical. Then we now set up plan. We set up a party. Now what? Now do what? New new break. Let's say energy them. Do do welcome back to the show again. Thank you, thank you for having me. Esa, today we we are going to start the series with the duty of APRC. You know the Congress. They start in the the parties are going to start doing their Congress, and you know we have always said. Internal po party politics, internal party democracy is very important. Oppositions or political parties, all of them are governments in waiting. The way they handle these congresses, the internal democracies in there is important for people to know. Because if you want us to give you power, uh, you know, just how you operate within your political parties gives us, indi us an indication as to who you're going to be when you are in power. So it's important to talk to them ahead of the congresses. Today, um, Duruja is our guest. Yeah, um, welcome back to Duduja. Um, and of course, uh, I think, you know, starting with APRC is in order. Yeah. If you look at the alphabetical order of political parties in a, this country. It's A, right? It's A. There is, although there is um, the APP, um, All People's Party. The, I think. Are they still there? But, yeah. yeah, but if you look at the APRC, the oh. APRC will come before oh. um, the APP. Okay. Um, so it's good that we are starting with them alphabetically. Okay. And I hope we will, <laughs> we will continue with that, depending on which party will hold Congress. Because depending, I doubt on, whether, depending also who is available. Well, depending okay. on who is available. <laughs> okay. But it's good to have um, a brother back. I think. Um, he yeah. is someone that is always responding to media. Yeah. Yes. He's one politician in this country who doesn't run shy away, media. even when it is tough. Even when it is tough, he yes. will come and speak to the it. media. Yes. And so it's it's good that it's good to have him yeah. again. And I hope that we'll have a very fruitful conversation, especially yeah. surrounding the Congress and also well, I don't know whether I should call it the controversy surrounding his party. Or another group everything. Is cre creating controversy within the party. <laughs> everything. But anyway, everything about the party. I hope you. I, I'm, I'm hopeful that we will get a lot of clarification here today. Yeah, we'll get a lot. Do do. Uh, before we get into APRC itself, let's start with uh, what is what has been trending. Of course, we cannot avoid. We always do that every show. What has been trending is the the November protest that was supposed to be tomorrow. Um, with this coalition of uh, progressive Gambian COPG, um, I I have never invited them, but I know they've been on this platform several times talking about their intentions, uh, which was to to protest, to uh, manifest the high cost of living and all the things among those were things that they said they wanted to protest about. And um, what we have seen, uh, the supposed uh, protest has been postponed um, now. The mixed reactions from the public. I mean, some people have said this is a good move. I mean, at this point in time, this is not anything that we want to see in the country. And other people will say, but protest is a guaranteed human right. You know, pe people to protest and say, this is how I feel or this is how I want my country to be governed. That is something that is normal in any democracy. It doesn't have to be thousands or even, it can be just three people holding their partners and say what the message they want to say. Now, what is your own opinion about the entire 
protesting that they wanted to do and getting the Supreme Islamic Council to negotiate, to say, uh, put it on hold. I mean, what in fact, what is the context of even having that conversation with the Supreme Islamic Council? Well, I think like you rightly said, mm -hmm. um, protest in all democracies is a fundamental right. Mm -hmm. And this is, of course, part of the, you know, um, freedom of expression. Yeah. And of course, you know, for people to also assemble, people mm -hmm. have that right and nobody will deny that. And of course, as a, in a fledgling democracy, mm -hmm. as a democracy that is struggling, these are things that will obviously, that are expected, mm -hmm. um, that they will come up, you yeah. know, people want to exercise their rights and all that. And that is something that everyone will have to respect. Yeah. But sometimes also we look at the context mm -hmm. um, in which people want to stage particular protests or to demonstrate. Yeah. Now, one thing that needs to be made clear also is that um, there is no time bound for accountability. Yeah. And when we hold government to account, it comes in two forms. Mm -hmm. It comes in the form of elections. Mm -hmm. When elections are here, like you've been in power, you tell us everything, and you come after five years, we say, hold on, we want to hold you to account. Let's go back what you've promised in the past five years, whether you have done it. Yeah. We either give you votes or we deny you votes. So that's a form of accountability. We yeah. hold governments to account during elections. But it doesn't also stop there. Even after elections, beyond elections, we hold governments to account, mm -hmm. either through media engagements, where we go, we speak about issues, or sometimes we feel like um, talking in the media is not the solution. Sometimes we go out in the street and voice our opinions or you know, our concerns to the government and they try to respond to them um, accordingly. This mm -hmm. is this is helpful in, yeah. in, a, in a mature democracy, especially democracies that are struggling, yeah. you know, moving towards consolidation. It's very good. And that's what we expect here in this country. And I believe that be the coalition of progressive Gambians or any other group that want to state protest, um, their rights should be respected. And I've always said that for me, um, it is not for, in the exercise of your fundamental rights, you know, citizens should not seek permit from the state you know, to exercise their fundamental right. I think what is important mm -hmm. is that they must notify the state because where your right stops is where somebody else's right begins. Yeah. If you want to go out today and stake protests and, you know, disrupt the entire traffic here, know that people also have a right to get to their houses. So the state must be notified, but what the state should do is to make sure that security is provided. Mm -hmm. And the fear that people have is like, okay, when you stake this protest, there are unwanted elements or people who have different intentions. Well, it is the role of the states to make sure law and order is maintained. Mm -hmm. If people join protests who violate the law, you deal with them accordingly. That's very simple. So, but, but in exercising fundamental rights and freedoms like um, protests, it yeah. is not for the state to determine whether you should exercise that right or not. That's one thing. But when it comes to the context of these protests itself, I, I've never been talking about this whole protest thing because um, at the end of the day, I looked at it critically. Yes, it's genuine that we want to talk about corruption, you know, high cost of living. These are things that you need to talk about mm -hmm. for the government to look into them. But uh, for me, my problem is, I mean, why announce in a protest that you're going to stage in four, five months' time? This was what we saw in their case. And then you look at it also critically. They were talking about corruption, high cost of living. But of recent, they also included in their demands investigation into the acute debts. Yeah. So you tend to wonder whether they really have a sense of direction, what exactly they're working on, because... But it, because that also happened no, recently. No, no, yeah, but that, I'm coming. You see, every protest must have a motive. And if you tell us that the concerns that you had in the past are this, that, and that, stick to that. We also we know that there, are, there is a group that is currently working on the 66 death, there's a campaign, whatever. Do you understand my point? So if you come with a new demand, then it becomes something else. People tend to question the motive that really that you have, whether you really have a focus, that you're really focusing on something exactly here. I mean, so that's, that's my problem. About it. it's, not a, it's not a big issue because it's also about holding the government well, to account. account. But for me, it's all, yeah, yeah, for me yeah. there is a group that is also working on that. And you had your initial demands. I think you should really focus on those ones than to come out. Because if you come out with new demands, then people will tend to question whether you know, your concerns are really genuine or not. For me, that's, that's, that's the point there. But then when it comes to you know, having a conversation with the Supreme Islamic Council, for me, I mean, Supreme Islamic Council, yes, um, it's a religious body, you know, influential figures, people listen to them. But I think you hear, here you want to talk to the government. Why not the government come themselves and try to talk with you to see how best you can address this? But at the, at the end of the day also, I mean, you look at the demands that they have 
you know, um, raised, okay, the concerns. You said, okay, do we want these problems to be solved? Everyone knows that these problems cannot be solved <laughs> before November. Even in the past four months, everyone knows they cannot be solved. And then now you change to saying that you want the government to come out and respond to your short-term demands, like come with a press release or statement to say this, that, and that, this is the plan that we have. That's very easy for governments to do. But what impact will it have at the end of the day? Is that really why you're out there? For me, it's better for you to even go out and peacefully express your opinion, express your concern, and then you go back, than to have the government just to merely come up with a statement. Any government can do that, just to come up with a statement. At the end of the day, nothing comes out of it. So for me, I'm interested not only in the impact. Yes, it's a democratic right. It's good for our democracy, for people to express their opinions, for people to go, and it's important that the state also try to look into this critically. Every now and then they come with excuses, you know, national security, national security. That's something else. At the end of the day, if we're not mindful, it could derail the progress of our democracy. But what is important here also is the impact that it will have at the end of the day. We don't just want people to go out to protest just for the sake of protesting, just because it's a fundamental right guaranteed in the Constitution. But in the end of the day, we want to see impact. And the impact, when we say impact here, we are not saying that <laughs> you know, places will be destroyed or the government's people should be... No, we want to see changes. Let the government respond to but their is that? But is that? But is that? I, I mean, I, I defer with you when you say, what is the impact? For me, it is this. It doesn't matter whether... The, the, what they are going to ask for is being met or has an impact. What matters is, is the conversation they are raising. I, I think, I because think, what they are saying... I think, I think you, you, you're just misquoting. Maybe you just misunderstood what Okay, I'm what did you what say? What I'm trying to say is that uh -huh. I'm saying that it is good for our democracy yeah. for people to go out and express their, opinion, so, yeah. express their concerns to mm -hmm. the government. Yeah. That is good. Yeah. Now, at the end of the day also, we want to see impact. We don't just want people to go out and protest. I'm not talking about necessarily in the context of this. What I'm yeah, saying is that, yeah. I'm just giving this as an example, okay. that it's good that we have people going out yeah. to protest, to express their concerns to the government. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, what we also want is, we don't want this to be a routine thing that every now and then people protest and nothing comes out of it. People protest and nothing comes out of it. Yeah. We have to move away from that. We want when people protest, let something be done about it. We want to see the impact at the end of the day. It's not only about the democracy aspect. Okay, it's good for people to go out. It's a fundamental right. You respect that. Yes, that's one thing. But we don't just want to be protesting further. for the sake of protesting. We want to see impact at the end of the day. We want to see government respond to these demands. Well, uh, that, so that is part of... That is so not, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily questioning the impact these protests will have. No, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. So that is not the, the, the part of the protesters. That is the government, exactly. whether they are listening exactly. to what people exactly. are saying. Exactly, this is what I'm trying to yeah, say. So yeah. that, that, that I, no, I get it. That is important. I think that is something that everyone uh, will, 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 will agree with. Because at the end of the day, um, even if it is... Um, just talking about it right now, we're talking about it on prime time. Mm -hmm. It's because they, 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 they wanted people to talk about it, the high price and uh, cost of living. Now, Dudu, do you think it was genuine, they have a genuine cause as to going out and protest? Well, thank you. Uh, a lot of what I wanted to say has already elaborated Said. on it. Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, about the group, I have very little knowledge about them. Mm -hmm. Though we following the media, the yeah. press releases, the interviews, I don't think that, that is enough. Because when people come in the media, they don't expose all their motives, motives. Uh, the reasons behind it. Mm -hmm. There are uh, a few that they will keep to themselves to organize themselves better. But uh, I believe we're still nurturing our democracy, as, as I elaborated. Uh, it's a right, uh, it's a civil right, yeah. and our law provides for it that people can demonstrate, but peacefully. Mm -hmm. There, again, he made points that are very important. I always elaborate on that when it comes to security. Yeah. We just don't give people permit and leave them on their own. There should be police escort. This is what we see in other countries. Yeah. And make sure that whatever um, messages in that permit should be observed and abide by. These are always problems, because especially those who advise for permits, about time, the venue, the nature of it, mm -hmm. there are always implications when you violate it. Yeah. But if you're not on the ground, not to few, send few people to monitor, but there should be heavy security presence. Yeah. Just like he said, it's your right to protest, but it is people's right to, to ply the roads, because yeah. they are very important issues and matters that, that they are sorting out. So do they have to protest? Yes. And again, he made something, mentioned something very important that you don't need to apply to the state. Uh, for me, I believe the majority of our own people has it reached to that level. 
because a lot of protests here we see you know it eventually sometimes turns out to be violent because people only try to claim their rights while ignoring well, 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 all we, the can we clarify rights. that that most of the time it is the police that are provoking the protesters if you tell me to stay within this place as long as we are arriving there you started provoking protesters there's going to be issues yeah that goes back to the permit issue yeah because always there are regulations in the permit yeah because I've applied for per permit several times you go for screening and the all the agreements and all that whatever does not go right you'll be held you'll be held accountable for it mm -hmm. but in most cases these are things that those who apply for the permit or that's coming to be part of the protest some don't even know what are the regulations in the permit yeah. they come and do as they please this is what will create problems with the security but normally security in most cases they don't just jump on people they try to stop you try to engage you and discuss but it's an attitude in us that once we're out in the street we don't want to respect security we do encounter we will not encourage for police brutality or sometimes how people are manhandled mm -hmm. but we flout our own laws yeah. rules and regulations giving we sometimes skip it these are issues now coming back to whether it's their right mm -hmm. yes even me i'm asking about the objective of the protest itself. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to protest for a reason, you need to stick to that. Yeah. If you engage and issues are discussed and you arrive, you know, maybe in, 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 in agreements or there are promises made, it might stop the process, uh, the, the, the protest from going on. But on the side of government too, I believe, you know, communication and those that are the mouthpiece of the government should not only be writing press releases. Yeah. They should also engage the media. Some of these issues they're talking about, like when they talk about economic hardships, it affects all of us. Yeah. So government need to come in the open and tell people the reasons behind what it and on? what is government going to do in order to tackle all these issues. Yeah. It will dampen down this people's spirit, those that want to protest. Maybe they're asking for solutions or there are answers, the uh, questions that they don't find any answers. But when you engage them, discuss with them, possibly there could be win-win situations. And on the side of the Supreme Islamic Council, mm -hmm. uh, part of their mandate is the mediators, especially when it comes to the aspect of peace. But for me, it should have been more of a dialogue if you invite the group itself, let government also government be Government representatives were there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yes, then, then beautiful. They You'll there. be able to strike a balance whereby on both parties, this is our demands. Yeah. How are you going to meet these demands? Now, if these negotiations and discussions are done, we'll definitely have a way through. Yeah. But government's response, in most cases for me, it's always slow. It's more of reaction. When people, you know, make accusations or they put their stance this way or that way, mm -hmm. that's when, in most cases, they just come to clarify or to defend. Mm -hmm. It should be the other way around. Engaging stakeholders, it's, it's, it's very key in democracies. But again, those on the side of protest, should it be continuous? One thing, too, we need to protest. One thing, too, that's also, it's not going to help our democracy. No, 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 do, do. I, this is where I agree, disagree with people on protest. Mm -hmm. I believe that, I mean, I don't know, it's because, you know, uh, that I lived outside the country and I see people protesting for every single thing. <laughs> right now, you know, you don't have internet in your house, you go stand and protest, just yes. even one person. It's a way of showing your frustration. And mm -hmm. my belief is this, the, the way our, our government or our officials, our parents, including my dad, see protests. We need to start educating people. Unless we start educating people, telling them it's okay to protest, mm -hmm. and don't make it like, okay, Banco Kana Farale, then we're going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. Because for example, if every single day somebody wants to protest, we see the police mobilizing the entire army and, poli and putting out this massive um, security uh, plans and it's getting like out people seeing it, people getting worried. Oh, we see government saying, you left the bank, malalale, and Supreme Islamic Council running after them, you know, having these big dialogues because they think they're going to burn the country. Unless, until we start telling people, no, that is not what is going to happen. People can go and protest. The other day, Madi Jobate and others had issues. They went to the um, to the American embassy, right? And just protested there. Like people say, oh, it doesn't matter. It can be two people. Exactly. What matters is what the message is. And unless, un until we start discouraging people to go out and protest and say what their frustrations are, then we are going to have, there's this fear. There's this fear that we put behind protest, making it look like anytime we protest, people are going to die, something is going to happen. We have to take that fear out because we are going to, people are going to protest. Well, I, 
I quite agree with you. Yeah. But you've, you've mentioned examples of other countries. For example, Senegal. they create perimeters for them, like y in other yes, countries. And yes. you stay within that perimeter. You do. But here, people Sometimes don't... Sometimes you don't people, even have perimeters. The people don't adhere to that. I'll give you an example during the nomination. Perimeters were created. People have to force their way through those barricades, bring it down, and force entry. Now, what do you expect security to do in such instances? In any country, they will try to protect the stability of such an environment. It's because of what and we... And also, we, the, when we talk notion. about protests here, we always want to take the highway. Instead of, like, for, for instance, if you tell them, go around Sting Corner, they'll tell you, no, 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 we're going to do it on the highway. Again, that If I'm protesting against NAWEC, I want to go to NAWEC headquarters. I don't want to go to Sting Corner. We do, this do is that. It. If I want to protest against American embassy because they, they want to take the, the, the dream park, uh, whatever they call it, I'm going to American embassy. That's, the, that's how it's supposed to be. My thing is, I'm not saying we should go out and protest every day. I think it's the notion that we put out there anytime Mole protest can be no falale. So we make that fear of protest to the point that the state, the police, think, everybody I, I makes think it. This boils down to one thing. Yeah. What you're talking about here, and what do you think? It boils down to one thing. <sighs> it's about the political culture. Mm. What is the level of maturity of our democracy, and the level of awareness of our people? Like you, I think you're trying to say the same thing. Mm -hmm. That the reason why you know people will be given guidelines and they will you know flout those rules guiding the protest is because of the level of understanding. Mm. But the reason why also some people will think that any time we protest, it will turn out violent, is also the level of understanding. And mind you, we cannot also forget the situation of the Gambia, what we are in. The reason why people think that protest will turn violent is because this country has been strike phobia. Mm -hmm. Protest has never been encouraging this country. The last time we had protests prior to the change of government yeah, people was died. 2000. Mm -hmm. The student protest demonstration took place, yeah. Yeah. and people were killed. Yeah. Since 2000, the last the other protest we had was 2016, when mm -hmm. Solo Sandeng and the others went out. Mm -hmm. What happened? They died in the hands of security forces. Mm -hmm. And now, so because we are not even used to protest, this is something new to us. And yeah. the three years Jotna. Exactly. The three years Jotna came, we saw how the police responded to that. Even though I had my, I had my big reservations with how the police responded to that. But it shows that we are not even, we have a very low understanding of protests. Mm -hmm. One, it's not only about the citizens who are protesting, but even the government. Yeah. Or they do it deliberately. Because security forces, I cannot understand, when people want to come and express their anger, it's also important, like he said, government, there must be that effective strategic communication, mm -hmm. what we call strategic communication and leadership. Yeah. It, it must be there. That government must effectively communicate pe to people that when we say protest, we are not saying violent. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Come out, like you said, Peace one or two it. people can come out in their streets yeah. and, yeah. and say, look, I don't have internet in my, my house. My alcohol is not There's doing no his job. Yeah. My alcohol is charging. That's protest. That's you, protest. You, you, you're protesting. Yeah. Do you understand? But for us, when we say protest, it's like you said, Bankole Kanafara, mm. the security situation. It's also because the way government handles some of these protest requests. Mm -hmm. I cannot understand. Even, I mean, I think two months ago, three months ago, Gambia participates, mm -hmm. okay? Wanted to le lead a peaceful march. I think they were trying to seek clarification for something. I can't remember exactly. And the police had to deny them, I mean, permit, okay? It's simple. Sometimes when you encourage this, you give them permit. You encourage it. People become used to it. And, and they, they, they do it does it, it does it, yes. But that's I cannot understand that's... when people request... And you say, okay, for security reasons, we, what security reason? And that is why I have my problem with this. I've said this several times, but I'm saying it for the first time on the media, that I do not believe, I don't subscribe to the belief or notion that police should grant permit to citizens when they are protesting. You know why? Why? This is a fundamental right. I do not need to seek permit from the state, for the state to give me permit to say, okay, you can go ahead and exercise your fundamental right. What I need to do is to notify the state because the state is there to maintain law and order. And provide. Like I said, yeah. where your right stops is where somebody, somebody else's right begins. Right. Yeah. When yeah. I go out today and occupy the streets here, know that people want to reach their houses, yeah. people want to go to work, people want to do different stuff. And I'm encroaching on their rights as well. Mm -hmm. So what the state will do is that the state can say, you know what, you can't protest around Westfield, let's say, in the rush hours. Mm -hmm early hours of the morning when people are going to Banyul or maybe 4 p.m. because people are rushing home, you can't protest there. Yeah. We can give you a particular place. Let's say you want to protest Nawek. Mm. 
Mm. Now it has an office. You go around that office and be stationed there mm. so that you don't disrupt traffic. Exactly. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So the state is there to play that regulatory role. Mm. Now, anybody who comes where they will say, sometimes people come who have, you know, hidden ulterior motives, motives. Ulterior motives. Ulterior motives. Mm. You see, it is very unfair yeah. when you go to seek protest yourself yes. and they tell you that anything that happens will be held responsible. That is wrong. Mm -hmm. Duruja cannot control everybody that comes to that protest. Yeah. That's what the state happens. will have to be there. That is why the security is that there is to role. ensure yeah. that if Duruja is organizing protests and Esanya comes and flood the rules or start the strike, the state comes and deal with me. Yeah. It is the law that is there. Yeah. Do you understand? So, but I don't need to stick permit. The state doesn't have to approve whether I should exercise my fundamental right or not. The state don't give that permission. It's just like when we have to vote. Does the state have to give me permission to say, okay, in order for you to vote, I have to approve. The state doesn't approve whether I have to vote or not. No. As long as I meet the requirement, I have the age limit, uh, age requirement and everything, I can come out and vote. I don't need permission, approval from the state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't need approval to go to the media. I don't need approval from the state to go to the media and express my opinion. Because these are fundamental rights. These are civil and political rights. Where we talk about economic, social, and cultural rights, this is where we talk about progressive realization. We have to look at the capacity of the state, the financial or the resource capacity of the state, where they can provide this. But first generation rights, civil and political rights, you don't take this from your pocket and give it to the citizens. It's simple. So in a, uh, for unless and until we do away with this notion of police granting us permit that the state will have to approve if SNJ has to exercise its fundamental right and freedom, then we'll be in this mess. So the state should not even give approval. What the state will have to emphasize, which should be a law, is mm -hmm. that every citizen that wants to protest, notify the state. So that the state will help you in the exercise of because the security is not only for others but even yourself. Just yeah. If you are protesting, you might have some people who will want to come and you know attack you or whatever. Yeah. Abuse you. So you have the state to make sure that you are also protected. Yeah, okay. But also public places are protected. But also others also have the opportunity to exercise their right. But yeah. you don't have to give approval. What they have to do is that notify them. When you notify them, they come and provide security. Yeah. Anybody who comes and flood the rules, deal with the person according to law. But you don't have to give approval. But in this country, that is why sometimes I feel like we have not completely departed from the Yajame era. I cannot imagine in the 21st century, we're still talking about this. Now, the very moment, <laughs> we have to start doing away with this notion. But now, what is the, the way very, forward? The How way do forward, we do that? Forward. Because, like like I said, everybody, my dad, everybody, if I think Allah Mutol Fila and Lamembang, I didn't do that, because I'm a protest lady. That fear in the people is still there. And it's, the, it's what the has government, the state, you know why? Yeah. You know why you blame the government for it? Uh -huh. I cannot understand when the minister or the government spokesperson or whoever there will come and say, these people are enemies of the state. They want to burn down this country. They want to, how do you label people as enemies of the state? Are you more patriotic than them? Just because you are in office, you have the opportunity to serve in public office, you are more patriotic than them? Are you more patriotic than the teacher who is struggling teaching in the classroom? Just because you are occupying the opposition of government spokesperson or minister, are you more patriotic than that person? Are you more patriotic than the woman who is struggling in the farm, in the garden? Are you more patriotic than that cleaner in the hospital who is cleaning to make sure that the hospital is tidy for people to be able to be there? I mean, you're no more patriotic than any one of us because you are president or minister. So we are not enemies of the state. Those that are protesting, well, it's subjective. You, to you, they might not be genuine. To SNJ, these concerns might not be genuine. To Duduja, they might be genuine. Mm -hmm. But they have a reason to protest. All that you can do is that, yes, you can exercise your right. But you cannot also encroach on the rights of others. But we will give this to you. You don't even have to seek approval from us. So for me, the conversation in the Gambia currently should start from this. Yeah. That we need to, this notion, we must do away with this notion. Mm -hmm. We must tell the state, let's change this law. This Public Order Act is a colonial law. It was used by the colonialists because they wanted to suppress our people. And that was why Edward Francis Small was out, mm -hmm. saying no taxation without representation because they wanted to suppress our people. And our governments inherited it from the Jawara era to the Jame era to the Baro era. They inherited it, they maintain it because it suits them. Yeah. They will do away with it when it does not suit them. But it suits them, that is why they want to maintain it. It is now time for human rights defenders and activists, civil society, political parties to come out and tell the government, change this draconian law 
It's a suppress. If it's a repressive law, we want to change. We want citizens when they want to protest, let them just, just notify the state for the provision of security. But the state should not be in any position to grant approval for citizens to exercise their fundamental right. And then the issue of sensitization, education, awareness creation can come in, where the National Council for Civic Education can come and play a part. Civil society can play a part. Right. Political parties themselves. That is why political parties are seen as agents of political socialization. Yeah. Create the notion of peace, the message of peace. It's important for political lead, especially leaders, to avoid standing on political platforms and making statements that could endanger the stability of the country. Yeah. Try to pick the notion of peace. Make people, your members even understand <coughs> the essence of protest. Mm -hmm. Tell them that you can protest. Yeah. Do it peacefully. It's a fundamental right. It's a duty that all, all of us have. But also, one thing here is that we must also understand that this, must be, this can only be realized progressively. Our democracy is a fragile one. It's, it, we're nurturing it. We're just moving. It's a fledgling one. It's not a matured one yet. We're talking about people don't even understand the notion of protest. Yep. Not only that, but go to social media today. Someone can express his or opinion about how the country is run. Someone will come and just insult. The first thing you do is sometimes they don't even read what you wrote. Mm. They just come and insult you. Pam. Attack you unnecessarily. Do yeah. you understand? So mm. our democracy, we're really struggling. So we must also be ready to be patient mm -hmm. a bit to say that, look, we, have, we will be there one day. But it has to take steps. But the government must take that leading role and let them stop labeling people, calling people names. These are enemies of the state. They want to burn down this country. This, uh, this will not help, because if the government is there and <clears throat> trying to be repressive, coming out with repressive statements, people can also say, well, it is my right. I will have to go out and protest. At the end of the day, God forbid, it can turn violent. Anything can happen in the country. What can you do? Okay. You want to suppress people. When you push people to the wall, they will have to fight back. Yeah. Uh, they let, have to, yeah. let me share this experience with the Black, Black Lives Matter protest. Uh, it was myself, Keksan, uh, MC Cham Jr. Yeah. Uh, when we wrote to the IGP, then the late uh, um, Mahmoud Job. Mahmoud Job, yeah. Uh, three different interest groups you know, had the same objective of wanting to protest. Yeah. Uh, what he did at the time was he invited all groups at his office and mm -hmm. said, okay, this is all the same cause. Why don't you do it jointly? Save trouble for the police and, you know, to have the same objective protest on different days. Mm -hmm. Why don't you do it together? To yeah. tell you sometimes the problem is us. Well, one of the group says for them, they're activists. They cannot organize anything with us, the politicians. politicians it's yeah. like discrimination is coming into play. Yeah. What is wrong with activists, politicians, well, they don't want citizens, to be, they all They don't want to be labeled politicians. On one object. In no. this country, when it you deal not, with politicians, they say yes. you are from that party. Let me help you that out. That is the truth. Let me help you out. Uh -huh. It was not about politics. Yeah. It says black lives matter. We are all fighting one cause. That's, yeah. what, that's when George Floyd was killed, killed. in America. Yes. It's not even about Gambia. Gambia. Now. I this know. is about humanity. So why drag politics into it? Yeah. And the three of us cannot overshadow everybody. We invited the public to join. Yeah. It was not politics. Just to see you sometimes, the lenses we wear, we need to remove it and see the interest of all. These are challenges. Mm -hmm. Now, we wanted from Westfield to the American embassy. Mm -hmm. But the police says no. You're going to start from the pipeline most to the American embassy. Just to ease traffic. Yeah. Westfield is congested, like as I said. said yeah. We agreed to it. And they gave us one hour from 11 to 12. You don't need to go beyond this time. What happened is people arrived late. We started late. And we went beyond the one hour that was given. Mm -hmm. Especially when it concluded, the American embassy staff came out, you know, so solidarity with us. But the media helped us beyond the time for interviews and all that. Mm -hmm. But the police invited us back again, saying that we gave you one hour. You went beyond it. It's like you flouted the rules. We have to plead and appeal with them. But it was peaceful mm -hmm. because security was on the ground to guide us. That is the angle I am talking about. And we sensitize the people before we start. Don't attack vehicles. Don't do this. Don't vandalize. People were well sensitized, like what he was explaining. And they understood the message. And we make sure that all those who are part of it, either you have, a, they all wore the T-shirt. It mm -hmm. was not a very big group, a very um, sizable crowd. Yeah. We did it peacefully without problems. Yeah. But again, whenever you talk about protests, some have this notion that they need to vandalize, they need to attack the shop. Even sometimes they attack people and start snatching their mobiles. The mentality and the understanding of protest like it needs to be discussed. People need to be sensitized. It's about they need time to we have this rights. conversation. And, and, very, and, and, it's about time but it has to, but it has to start with the police, government, all and, stakeholders. And all, all stakeholders. Because the reason why I say this is important mm. is this. 
if you keep telling people, no, you cannot go, you cannot go, you cannot go, mm. at some point they, they will, will not listen to you. Yes. Give people permit. Of if course. Ature want to go protest against somebody, let her go. If I go alone and nobody comes, <laughs> next time, you know, I will not. Of course. Just, you I agree. I, look, I, I, you know I, what I'm saying? I, and I can but, give you an example. But if yeah. you keep saying no, 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 mm. Somebody like me, man, if you tell like me don't do this, that's when, I, right. that's when I want to do it. Yeah. Don't say no. Mm. It's my right. Yeah. Let me do it. If it's not, Follow if, the if I the flout the laws, laws. Yeah. if people flout the laws, man, this country have laws. Let exactly. them be responsible. Mm -hmm. But if in the moment you start telling people, no, then everybody starts getting and, 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 and sometimes social media plays a part. There are audios that go around. But People yeah. that nobody knows them, but the message they're sending. That's why know, government, really government has to take the role of communicating. Making look, you know, like you said, for example, we we're going to talk about it right now. The people, these people said they want to protest because uh, food is expensive, yeah. everything. No, we all know this is across the world. Yeah. It's happening, it's and people everywhere. are protesting about it. Yeah. Just, Just Ghana, Ghana, Ghana protested three days ago. Exactly. They were demanding for the president to resign. To resign yeah. Nobody said those people are enemies. Mm -hmm. Nobody said they are going to burn the country. Mm -hmm. They protested, and it we saw the right, videos. Yeah. Now, everywhere, you go to America, you go to Senegal, you go to China, Things are expensive because of all of these things that and happen. And in Ghana, the police were there. They, they had the, 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 the escort. That's what I'm saying. They are telling you maybe there's going to be a recession. Governments are coming. Every single day you see President Biden coming, telling people, this is what I want to do. We want to take more fuel from our reserve to pump in the market so that fuel prices can go down. Mm -hmm. This is what we are trying to do to make sure we stabilize prices. Now. How often do we see that from government? You have to talk to the people uh, so we a, understand. This a, is not Gambia's problem. Mm -hmm. It's not just Gambia where things are expensive. It's everywhere. Yeah. But how do we tell people it's going to be OK? This is what we're doing. And we plan to do this to make it OK for you. I call now, that giving hope to the people. I, 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 let, 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 do we do that? Yeah, so, so the, 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 the issue here is that when you talk about um, you know the peaceful nature of protests in this country or whether they turn violent, you see, like I said, throughout the Jami era, Gambia was strike phobia. After tw April tw 2000, yeah. nobody you know was protesting. Yeah. 2016, 2016 was not even going to turn violent. No. The solo Sunday protests. Yeah. It's just the way the security handled, handled the situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we mm. saw when lawyer Dabo was coming out with his people. What did he tell them? Even in his own house, mm. he told them, "Let nobody insult anybody. Let nobody, you know, destroy or attack anyone. We are going out with a message. Yeah, That's give us solo now. back, dead or alive." Yeah. Well, well, let me help you before you proceed mm -hmm. on on the protests of Solo Sanding and Co. Information flew that at the border. Mm -hmm. You know, see their bio Biden and his men wanted to attack the country so that they'll social be media true or false. Yeah, yeah, that's the part I'm talking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, and when understand. people are terrified, they tend to take countermeasures in covering it. Yeah. You know, but informations like that go to panels, go to the media, and clarify. Exactly. It will exactly. The exactly. So, so, so when when that happened, we saw Dabo and, and, and his core went out. Yeah. You know, peacefully. Yeah. The police came and arrested them. Few in nearly turned violent because they could have also arrested them without any form of violence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we go. When Ali Uba and others wanted to protest here, yeah. they protested actually. Yeah. It was against Nawek and all that. They protested initially when they wanted to protest. People called them names and insulted them. Yeah. Yeah. That they want to burn the country, they're enemies of the country. But they went out peacefully. Yeah. And nothing happened. Mm -hmm. We saw several protests have been held in this country. Mm -hmm. He's talking this about one. Yeah. He's talking about the George Floyd case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a day before Yaya Jami made that, no, a day after he made that um, big um, announcement of not going into alliance <laughs> with, with Barrow. Yeah. The, the following day was a protest for the implementation of the TRRC recommendation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a peaceful march. We held yeah. it from, I mean, I think, um, I can't remember exactly, but it's on Kairaba Avenue up to West Fifth mm -hmm. Monument. Yeah. Okay, sometimes the protests that turn violent is yeah, the way I think the state from the also pipeline yeah. must pipeline must exactly is the way the state also handles these things. Yeah, and not only the way they handle this, but yeah. communication here, Fatwa, keep I will just emphasize. Says, yeah, this is not personal, but I think the government spokesperson is not a good communicator. Several times we have seen press release or messages coming from his office. I mean, that are not even expected of 
at such an office of that caliber, Why? I can not just understand. No, he, he writes you have, English, you, no I'm not talking about the English. No, not the grammar. I'm talking yeah. about the wording. Sometimes the message that comes out. Yeah, message you're driving. The, for the, the message that you are bringing out. Sometimes you see the. I, ca I, I can't remember the exact example, but I was, there was a one that I was reading just I think two mo two weeks ago or three weeks ago. I mean, you see, you see how emotional this guy was in his message. That is not how you run a country. We cannot just have a 21st century Gambia. We're talking about protecting rights and freedoms. The president will go and stand and mention an activist that he wants to bond this country. I think, go, I think honestly, government still so needs to work on the way they communicate. The way the they communicate. Yeah. Don't label these people. Don't label people. Allow them but to it, do But then the president himself, when he came from the UN, when they asked him about, <laughs> about people... The he level. He, that, that's he, another problem. He, you know, those that's things happen, problem. Right? You happen to stand yeah, there yeah, and label yeah. the group, the one that protested three years, and the one that are planning in to protest... protest in November. They are all, all in particular political. Yeah, my my question are, here is, does the president need to answer all questions? Exactly. You must have a communication that is why I Sometimes said it's all about people. communication Even and PR. Even in democracies like the US, the, the, the Secretary of State will, will come and handle press briefings and take yeah. questions from the press, handle it professionally. I why everything should be the president? But I think the truth is, it's, uh, they need to work on the communications and PR. In these and I don't know, with all the communication, you have the director of communications. <laughs> I don't know, you call it media and communications at State House. Yeah. You have government information minister. You have government spokesperson. With all I mean, these communicators, and still they are communicating in a very terrible way. And I, I don't just understand. I mean, yeah, I think, you know, um, communication has different facets. Sometimes some people are trying to talk to the international community. Mm. You know, because to be honest, that's where our donors and everything, you're trying to uh, put calm in that level. So I sometimes I always feel like, to be honest, the, the government spokesperson, he speaks in that angle. I think, in my own opinion, that's what I think. But I think, to be honest, they need to look at their communication because at the end of the day, uh, like I said, um, what is happening in Gambia is what is happening in Senegal, it's happening in Ghana, it's happening in America. Faru, we the, all the need only, to address the, the, the our only, The only way, the only com complicated way this government spokesperson communicate is using jargons that are not even necessary in his statements. Apart from that, what you see is emotions, emotions, emotions. That's the fact. He's not communicating with any outsider there. He's just communicating and trying to label people. And it is time that he stopped labeling people. The other time he labeled Mahdi Jobate here, even saying that he's working for the Westminster Foundation and your job, what, who, who, who cares about the Westminster Foundation? If they are not employing you as a citizen, you can be employed by others. So it's important that he try. I think there should be a course called communicate, leadership and communication strategy that some of these people need to go through. We are in a very fragile situation, a very difficult situation. How do you deal with all these complex challenges from security to economy? All these social problems that we face, there is a way that you deal with these things. A lot of people are disgruntled. Yes, they have right to be disgruntled. Well, whether it is genuine or not, that's one thing. But you are a government, you want to be in power, you want to manage, but you also want to address the challenges that people are facing. There is a way to do that, not the all the time responding to you know claims or situations that are not unnecessary that are not that are unnecessary but also sometimes the president like you said will come out and address i mean you don't need to be addressing every single thing exactly. as a president there are people that should be communicating and there's a way to communicate to them. But I, 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 be, I believe that there are certain times you know need the president to come out and speak yes. so for example we, we in this i, I, I believe agree. in this hardship that we are going through though these tough times that we are going through as a nation if i was the president I I would have come out with the qualities that President Barrow has. I angale kaumwe, I manika kaumwe, I surua kaumwe, I fula kaumwe, I sarahule kaumwe. I will talk to the people directly. This is what is happening. Banko kanyine bakere. For example, when this November protesters came, said they were coming to come out and protest because there were hardships in, in the country, the president could have come out and speak to the nation. No, no, speak to, to them on them for, issues. To engage them speak for, to them on I think, issues. I think, let me help you here. But I think the president I, should be doing this community. See, it's Baro, important. Baro, Baro comes out and speaks when people don't expect him to speak. Responding at the airport, responding, labeling this group, that was something that nobody expected. But when we expect him to come out and talk, that's when he will wait. Like I always say, this government is reactionary, not proactive. That's when he will wait for pressure to be mounted. The 66 children, when they died, it was only because of public outcry that he had to come out and talk. Even the COVID-19, COVID-19, I was in here then. But when it started, Governments, presidents, we are talking, responding, talking to their people. 
It had to take a public outcry in the Gambia. People had to mount press on social media that where's Barrow, where's Barrow, where's Barrow, he's not talking. I remember Dr. Sisa had an interview with Isit Member Kerry. He was saying, like, President Barrow was asking, where, where are you? Now I am here. Now I'm also asking him, President Barrow, where are you? People want to talk to him. Doctor is not saying that anymore. No. <laughs> anyway, so he had to come out only to talk because there was pressure. Yeah. So for him, when people need him to come out, that's when he will be relaxing unless we put pressure. And then when people are not expecting him to talk, that's when he will come out and talk. Yeah. yeah for, no. for me, I believe I he, he has a team that needs to help him. Yeah. As the president, he has a lot on his table yeah. to, to, to deal with. And I feel what is lacking is their communication yes. should be one unit. Sit together, brainstorm together, and whatever is on the table, all of them can go and disseminate. Yeah. They will all be speaking in the same language. You could even share, let's say, let the government spokesperson go to West Coast, let the press secretary come to Kerfatu, let another one go to another media. It's message. It will help you to disseminate fast, and people will get the message. But if our offices are separate, we all work in our own ways, differences will occur here and there. Mm -hmm. And what you write, I cannot go to another media and defend, because mm -hmm. I don't understand the context of the message. Yeah. I think these are challenges they're having. Mm -hmm. And they should be engaging the president to brief him and help him understand what is happening and collectively they can come up with an information to share with the rest of do, us. Do you think there's also an issue because sometimes I see some messaging and when the president comes out and say ah ma, tuno have a thousand six hundred manu dajita have a price. The information and, that's and given then to I'm him. I'm thinking like what the who is telling the president <laughs> these things because that is not the reality yeah. and these things are very serious exactly. because when the president speaks every single thing he says we listen to it. And it you makes know, people The other day I was talking to somebody, he said, man, you know, MC Chav, he called me, he said, I'm going to do an audio. President, I'm going to do a leader. I'm going to do an audio. I'm going to do an audio. I called the shop, no, I, and the shop I, said I bought, I bought it 1,900. The next day, I heard that he said it's 1,600. So those kind of maybe, things. Maybe they're giving him prizes, so is, you know, from yeah, the port the authority order, yeah. when it's no, coming different from the, what is Look at even the, I think we'll come back to the yeah. But, but <laughs> look at even the, <laughs> look at even the, um, the state of the nation address. Yeah. I kept on saying that, I know Nobody is even talking about it. The president said since the beginning of 2021-2022 tourist season, I think. 2021-2021 tourist season. He said 53 flights arrive in the country every week. And these are information given to him. How do you defend that? Are they doing fact check? I I so some of these things... So like that's what I'm saying. I think, to be honest... Um, there needs to be more communication and more collaboration. Exactly. And at this time that we are in, things are tough yes. everywhere. No, really. Things are really tough. People yeah. are like this. The market is crazy. Inflation is high. I think the, Sabali, the other day we had, so he says, which is a central bank at that point was 13.2, the highest ever for the past 50 something years since we had independence. Mm -hmm. That is really high. Ordinary Gambians cannot afford basic three meals. Yeah. The president should, and the communication team should devise ways of communication it's and important. talk to the people. Yesterday, I was listening to President, uh, president Biden after the election result. He said, the people spoke. They gave us a divided government. They told us they want us to fix the economy. They want us to fix this. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you were angry with him, but he comes out and say, I understand you. Things are tough. That You're telling effective communication. communication. But that's what we don't get here. We don't have those interfaces. And I think it's important. The communication team of the president should make sure he speaks to the nation directly. Let him speak in Fula, in Surahule, in Mandinka, in Wolof. Talk to the people. I think those things are very important, uh, uh, Dudu. Yeah, again, the media will help him to do that. Yeah. The Dudu has a lot to say about the APRC. Now let's move to the APRC, Dudu. What is happening at the APRC? Well, what is happening, Dudu? We, well, as we, far as we are concerned, yes. APRC is still uh, a single party, though the breakaway is there. Uh, we're very much focused about our Congress because it is mandatory, it is by law. So all our energy, all our technical know-how is divided or focused on how do we have a very successful Congress. At the moment, this is where we are. Now, what kind of Congress are you going to have? Is it an elective Congress? What is your internal Congress structure? Do you go and elect all the members after five years, or do you do it every two years? How do you do it? Thank you. It's a very important question. People should understand that all political parties, they have their own constitutions. Mm -hmm. um, that might be similar, but there are differences. And it's just a handful of pages compared to the constitution of this country, which is bulky. Yeah. People need to understand that. Our own constitution, it is the party leader and national chairman that we elect at Congress. That is, if there are modern one 
person seeking for the same position, that's when we go to election. But before, our voting criteria is consensus building. Majority agrees, you know, to, let's say it is X or, or Y, and uh, we veto that. But in case of consensus building is absent, that's when we go into voting. But our constitution says, election is for the party leader, national chairman, then he will appoint the executive committee. No, 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 that's where the problem is. This is where ESA, internal This is what has been there. Internal demo And now, it's still there. It, yes. It, it, let me tell you. Because, this coming Congress. Let me, let, me, okay. let me come. Yes. Just because it's been there since Babylon Mansa time doesn't mean it has to be there. We're well, making changes. Coming internal, coming internal, internal, this coming yeah, Congress. Yeah, I wanted I, to land there. I don't there. think that is what is happening. Okay, go ahead. We have reviewed our constitution and we have made changes. Uh -huh. It is for Congress to end those. We don't have the powers yeah. as executive members. We can make review, you know, a committee is appointed, uh, those who have some legal background, legal expertise, coupled with quite others who are very much off with the Constitution, we come up with recommendation. recommendation. But we take it to Congress. It is the delegates who will say, yes, we accept it, or they said, no, we're maintaining the old one, or go and work on it again. So meaning if it stays, if you go to Congress, mm. the only person that will be elected will be the party leader? The party leader. And he chooses who becomes a member of the executive. Yeah, in now, this is this, this, is a, this is a dictatorial talk. This is what has been there. I cannot tell you otherwise. You go to the constituent and say, okay, what do you say? How, how about, do, do, don't you think <laughs> mm. Gambia. this change, the reviewing of the constitution, especially this particular aspect, is coming because you're not in good terms with Jame. If Jame was still the supreme no, leader. No, no, no. Before you even say that, is it anything that you guys have effected to be tabled at the Congress? No, that's yes, what he's yes. saying. That's what he's saying. Congress but is highest authority. That's what I'm no, saying. No, did you say, do you... Do, do, no, that's what he's saying. He's saying that they have they to change it. To review that. We already did. Okay. There are amendments to the Constitution. That's, that's, I think that is very important. Well, the need for it is long overdue. Because yeah, I'm coming. I'll, I'll come. Let me yeah, let yes, me let me help you before you go there. Uh -huh. Because the Congress was, uh, the Constitution rather was when we were in government. Yeah. When yeah. Ministers, MPs, and all that has a stake in the party. Mm. Now we are an opposition. All those sections are no more relevant. So the need to adjust. And there are a lot of portfolios created. As example, deputy spokesperson is not in our constitution. Oh. Supreme party leader, it's not there. We cannot continue with that flow. It's the laws that should guide us. So all these, you know, necessitated for us to review and make some amendments. Yeah, so that, that's interesting. The reason why I'm raising this is because um, if you look at it, it's only the part, and Jammy was the party leader national chairman. Yes. yes. It's only the party leader the national chairman who is elected, and then he will have to appoint. I remember when like, exactly. you had issues with, um, with, the, with, the, with the breakaway APRC. Yes. Um, they were raising this. Mm -hmm. For them, they were relying on this argument to say, it is the supreme leader, that is Jammy, who appointed all of you. No. You people were not elected at no. Congress. No, Jame did not appoint us. But you said the national no, chairperson. Yeah, but Jame was that was during the days of impasse. Jame left this country without even talking about. You appointed no, but during the last Congress, it was I want Faba to help Kari. you with that. Yes, Faba Kari. Faba Kari. yes. Faba Kari. there was a Congress held before the break. In 2018. 2018 in okay. That was the first Congress after the impasse in Buya. In Buya. And the Congress resolutions. Yeah. That's when we appointed him as the Supreme, Supreme party, party, leader. party Leader. But we said in his absence, Tombong is in charge. All no, powers are. No, in no, what is the, because what is the electoral law? laws what does not the, allow you to be outside and to run okay, a party okay, or to be okay, part okay, of an okay, executive. Okay, okay, okay. yeah. What does the constitution say about the role of the supreme party leader? There's no supreme party leader in the, the constitution. constitution. No, your, your, your APRC. There's none. Did I'm you telling you. It was a resolution. It was an honorary title. Okay. Oh, Congress endorsed yeah. an honorary title. Now, going back to the Constitution, there's no powers that are assigned to him. There's no Supreme Party leader. Okay, so but, it's, but, not, but, it's but, not about German now. No, no it, like it is about the Constitution. It's not, it's not and again, our Constitution, no individual has any authority or power to expel anybody Dudu, from the party. Dudu, during, during your Buyam Congress also, Yes. I remember my team was there. Yes. Fabakari was not selected as... Secretary General and Party Leader. No, we, we don't have Secretary General. Well, how, what, we what, have Party Leader and National Chairman. Yes, he, he was interim. Interim? Yes. But 2021 Congress, that was changed. No, but, but why, yes. can, why would you have interim? If you have because interim. We were expecting that Jammer will come back. Seriously? That was the agreement. Yeah. Okay. That he's because going I away for a few months have, and he will be back. The <laughs> this was the belief. I remember the Guam Congress. Yes. I kept saying, why interim? <laughs> why Father Kelly was not the party? That was the belief. That was what, <laughs> what was in the, in the joint declaration. Yeah. You know, the agreement was he's going away for a few months and he is entitled to return any time of his life. But the agreement is a few months. I 
any argument said he can come. Anytime. Anytime. Yes, anytime, anytime, anytime of his life. Yes, 20 years. Yeah, it could be. So but but you cannot people. continue with interim, interim. The meaning for interim, it's part time. Mm, yes. You know, but people still are saying Tombang is interim, interim. They don't even understand the meaning of interim. What is important here, let me clarify what the constitution of APRC says. Mm -hmm. No executive member has any powers to expel anybody from the party. You can go and confirm from the constitution. Mm -hmm. What it says is we have to, you know, select a disciplinary committee and it will have to be outside the executive members. And they can cope in or invite five people to help them. And what they need to do is they need to investigate, invite people for questioning to follow due process of the constitution and to make sure that justice is served. What that disciplinary committee can do, they can make recommendations to the executive committee. Let's say they agree that Duduja has to be expelled. That has to go to Congress. It is Congress who said, yes, Duduja is expelled and I am gone. Not the party leader and national chairman, no executive member has any authority or power to expel anybody from the party. You? Who appointed you? I was coming to that. Mm -hmm. During the impasse, yeah. the party was in disarray. Mm -hmm. People at the bureau at the time, uh, the likes of Aysatu Jifanga, Jaju, mm -hmm. Bakso, Che, the former Lord Mayor, Yankuba Koli, Amu, uh, Honorable Musa Amul Nyasi, and their allies, quite a number of them, came together yeah. and started saying that the party must continue. We need people or somebody to step up and take the mantle of leadership as far as APRC. They started with former ministers. Yeah. They started with people who were key within the APRC. Everybody he said no. That's when they went to Trombong. He said he has retired from politics. They told him it's not a question of yes or no. We are saying that you must. You must come. But yeah. he said, if you people will be there to support and give everything, I'll be willing to give it a try. Yeah. And that's when they organized that buffer zone rally. Yeah. That was like a test whether APRC is still vibrant or are we gone for good. Mm. And the target was like 25,000 people together, and it superseded the targeted audience. That was like a life support for the party. party. Then that's when they started giving out positions amongst themselves. And the positions were not complete because people were turning their backs party. away from the party. party. Jambe never had time to appoint anybody or to say, I gave the party to far back. All yeah. these are stories. It was never true. So who appointed you? Tombong and the executive. Yeah. But your position is not in the constitution. It's not. It's but not it only means, mine. It, that's what I'm saying. It means as a party, mm -hmm. because th there's a reason why I ask this question. Yes. Because you made mention that there's nothing like um, a supreme leader yes. in your constitution. Spokesperson, mm. like deputy, deputy spokesperson, first no party spokesperson, leader, deputy. second party and leader. And then you create these positions. It yes. means as a party, mm -hmm. the internal democracy here, abiding by the laws, mm -hmm. the rules that establish this political party are being flouted. In the sense that you create, so appoint people mm -hmm. whose appointment is not even in line with the constitution. Does yeah. that give hope to people that the APRC is a party is that, that is law abiding? Well, again, I did mention we don't go to elective Congress. Only the party leader and national chairman is elected. The rest are appointed. Appointed by the not through voting or the constitution. The constitution has given powers Does to the, the leader to appoint. Positions? Does the constitution have for positions apart from the national chairperson position? Those yes. Positions. Yes, like youth mobilizers, women mobilizers, um, general those are all secretary. Those are all appointed. By the, that's what I'm saying. Appointed. Yes. Well, that's what I'm saying. If those ones are appointed, that's what I'm saying. One can understand because they are in the constitution. Yes. But why appoint people to positions that are not captured in the constitution? Yeah, because that is very problematic. Because the need arises for you to work better. Even corrupted members are there. It's not mentioned what type of position, but the party leader can cop members and give them positions. Position. That's the clause but, or the section that they capitalized to create all these other positions. It members. was needed at so the time. So you people are co-opted members? Yes. Once you are co-opted, you have, it's, it's, it's like you are a full-fledged executive member. member. This is what our constitution provides. provides That's why I clarified in the I beginning. Your is very it very problematic. No, it's, no, no, it's, it's, very, no, it's, it's, it's very problematic. It suits our party. No, it's you not. Know, it suits your party. It's yeah, yes. Not the days not of now. It is not the constitution of the country. It's this the constitution is, of APRC. You see, Dudu, yes. parties are governments in waiting. 
I quite agree. And that's why internal democracy in substantive. parties is very important. Of course, yes. Now, you cannot just have a uh, supreme leader and party chair mm -hmm. who decides to fire and hire people just like that, mm -hmm. just because he's the only one who's elected. Yeah. These things are problematic. And I hope you guys will look at that when you go to Congress. We will. We will. But all these laws, Congress has been endorsing it. That's the highest authority. Well, that's why I said no, it's no, at party no, level. Let me tell you something. Yes. You and I know how... Yeah, at the time, yes, operate. yes. Even today, <laughs> if the party leader wants ESA to be in the executive, that's the one who's going to be there. No, no. Because, but, no, but, the, the uh, delegates, because the people, yeah. remember, it's We not always the take entire, it to Congress for Congress but to But let endorse. me tell you, remember, it's not the entire party members who vote mm -hmm. on these things. It's the, it's, the, it's the delegates. No party does that anyway. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So, yes. And we know who comes from these delegates. No, no. You know? The executive don't select the delegates. Well, you know, it is done at the support, what level, but, at the constituency and me, region. Trust me, you guys have always have a hand. Because I do know. Not let always. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. I do know right now, in the four-year delegation that is coming to vote, you guys will be very, very careful as to who comes. There's no you don't, you don't want to be We're not going to elective Congress. You're nobody elective. nobody is challenging or the opposing. The party leader will, will still be elected, right? Yes. So you and that's Tombong. When was Tombong confirmed from interim? 2021. Don't you, the, 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 uh, oh, okay, yeah, the, the 2021 Congress. Congress. That's when we shifted from interim to for him to be party so leader, December national chairman. No, not December. no, no, it was in February well, because February IEC 20. extended yeah. due to the COVID. They extended oh, the COVID. The yeah, it was yes. supposed to be December 2020. Yes. Now, uh, yes. now, 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 31st of December, but they extended another two, three months because of the COVID. Mm -hmm. They extended it to February. Yes. Now, That's the one we did at the Paradise Suites. Hotel. Now, you're going to Congress. 16, 17, 17 18. In, in 17 precisely. De December. Yeah. In, 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 at at uh, Janjambure. Yes. Is Babili Mansa still going to be the supreme leader of the APRC? Uh, well, that has not changed yet. Unless we go to Congress, the delegates will have to decide that, not the executive. We can only send resolutions and say we're removing this. If they said yes, we endorse, so be it. If they said no, no, it's are staying, guys, are it you is guys, going to be retained. Do you, do you think if the executive will remove it or leave it there? Uh, they will table it or not? To be honest, that has not been talked about. I don't think anything. Like, it might be, but not to my knowledge yet, because we still have, you know, a few more weeks before Congress. Anything could happen, but it's not discussed yet. Not in my presence and not to my knowledge. Now, what is the relay? What, what is it? It does not have to come from the executive. Yeah. The Congress delegates, they can come, come up with their resolutions. That has to be very clear. It's not that all the resolutions are from the executive. No, the delegates and the party member, if those in the diaspora, they normally send in their own resolutions. But the executive normally looks at it to vet it. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, so this is what I was saying one time when the two parties were arguing, we are the real APRC, <laughs> we are the other APRC. <laughs> this is where it comes to play. Because to be honest, now we are going to Congress. Yes. Political parties are going to Congress. Mm -hmm. And the, where you know the real political party is the one that APR, that will do their Congress and take it to IEC. Yes. That is where it is. Now, what is the situation with the non alliance? Um, is there any 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 chances of you coming together as one family because the fact of the matter is this faction the Fawakari faction it is what is what's considered at the APRC at the IEC I as see, yes. APRC because even our names though, are there even though the party leader and the, the former founder and the main patron of the APRC is Yaya Jame and is with the other team but the truth is Things change, and the, in the documentation, it is Fabakari led group that is at the IEC. Yeah. His it's name there. is not there because the law doesn't allow it. It doesn't allow it. Fabakari's name is there. Yes. Now, what are you, is there any plans of reconciling and having the family together and work again as one party because non alliance, you know, to be honest, they are killing you guys in the politics as well. That is the truth. Yeah. <laughs> 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 My MP is from you guys, yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. Well, uh, the issue is like this. I am part of three groups that have been created for reconciliation purposes. Mm -hmm. But my honest opinion is it's not effective. Um, they've written letters to both sides. They've met with leadership of both sides and engaged them and discussed with them. Not to Alliance, they're only listening to Jammeh and nobody else. Without Jame, you cannot make headway in any way or form. So this is why, for me, there cannot be any reconciliation in the absence of Jame. 
because they said they only listen to him. Whatever he says, they guys, will abide by but, that. But are you guys making any efforts to reach to Jame? Well, 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 to be you, quite you honest, we're not. Also. Not to my knowledge, we are not. Maybe it might I happen, want to speak you know, to secretively, but not to my knowledge. I'm not aware of us making any effort. We don't have his contacts, you know, and we cannot be running after him. After all he said about us, it's like we're focused on the party and going about our business. To be quite honest, we did our best, all that we could. What we felt was best for him, what we knew that he was part of, we were all pushing it together. Until, up, up till the, live, the 11th hour, he has to come out and say things different. We respect that. People have a right to belong to anywhere. They have a right to say yes, they have a right to say no. You cannot say, okay, I have a right to say no, but you have no right to say yes. Nobody owns anybody here. And it's not against the laws of the party itself. The Constitution did not disallow it. The name of the party it's, itself, Alliance is part of it. And this is not the first time Alliance was done. It once happened during Jammeh's time with NCP, when the late Sheriff Mustafa Adiba was Speaker of the House. This is not the first time. So people have a right to agree and disagree. Whatever decision we have had, we might have taken, people will speak. And to be honest, the Alliance has been good for you guys. Is it's the best deal we can do. Third in command in the, of the country. And it was and part of the Congress resolutions of 2021. No, they taxed the executive to go into Alliance. No party's name was mentioned. They said, let's look for a party that we can go alliance with. And we try other political parties. GDC we tried, ANRD we tried, GANU we tried, but N NPP were the fortunate ones Is it because, because they, they used their resources. Is it because they have bigger pockets? Yes. Somehow, yes. Yeah. Because the party needed that too. We needed we need the support. Yeah. Politics, you cannot survive in the absence of finance. Right. That is no secret. Yeah. So people don't need to be beat about the yeah, bush about true. that. We've been struggling yeah. financially. Nothing was on the table. All of us were dipping our hands in our pockets and contributing to move the party. For but how Jami long do you... left some money with you people, right? Pardon? Jami left some money with you people. Yep. No, it was in 2017 that money was sent it's about sent. $3 million yeah. for the, for the um, parliamentary for and the local, local government, government elections. Yeah. And came the Camp Fender incident, where close to 900000 was spent on legal fees. Because that was never expected. But these were people who were arrested, yeah. taking to mile two, and they were going to court. The party will not fold its hand. Yeah. And it's not one, two people. It's a group of them. Legal fees is expensive. And this financial report was given at the 2018 Congress. The 2021 Congress, we hired a private firm and paid about 150000 for the party's accounts to be audited. They brought the report and they read it themselves. They did not hand over to the executive. Just to show accountability and transparency. Because these are part of the requirements in the electoral law. Now, going forward, um, you had an alliance with NPP. Yes. And you guys now, we are, after Congress, we are, we are going straight to local government elections. Yes. Is the alliance still going to continue? Say, we move forward. Hey, nah, uh, you, guys going, you, you guys are going to go on your Well, way. the marriage of convenience is still on. Mm. Whether we'll reach a consensus, that's the question here. And that can never happen until and unless we sit as an alliance with this cause. Agree and disagree, then we'll all have uh, um, agreements we'll take back to our people. But if we don't sit on one table and discourse, mm. I don't think that we'll reach an agreement. It will be like each party for himself the, or The last side. election, uh, during the parliamentary election, you know, Dudu doesn't shy away from what he believes. Of course. You came here on the branch, I watched, and you said... Mm. Um, we are not going to get the majority that we want. Of course. And that happened. Yes. Um, do you think you guys, the Alliance, should start working now to get the desired results, or if not, it's just going to be a repeat of the national? The Alliance should have start work yesterday, not yeah. now. For me, it's even late, but it's still possible. If each party happens to put up their own candidate, we're all going to lose again. I'm saying it here. And Dudu, you know, Dudu, you said this, and I, I watched your interview a few days ago, and I was like shocked. Because, you, you know, you, you, you said, you, you know, you can, you, you did not even say openly, I'm going to um, um, set up a political party. You said, if I want, I can op set up a political party. And I have interest in KMC. It seems like when you made that pronouncement, <laughs> you had a lot of heat, even from your own political party. No, not, not, not from my own political party. Few people within the executive. Few people, you Because said. even when, when Rambo's audio was out, yeah. in our forums they were very angry with him. Yeah. That this but is an issue that listen, he should not even have Rambo dilated on. Rambo is the deputy on. party leader of the APRC. 
That is not in our constitution. So his rights are limited. No, no, but father, uh, but, but, but he, he, just yes. like you or other members, he was a mem appointed by the party leader. Y yes. If the next in line can say those statements about you saying you have an intention, that is problematic. Well, when it comes so? when when it comes to the party's policy, the party leader made it very clear that it is the party leader, the spokesperson or the deputy spokesperson, or anybody else appointed by the executive to handle that issue. Not anybody can just record your audience share it. The party does not operate like that. I am here because of my capacity as the, as the deputy spokesperson and director of media, media. because yeah. it's a responsibility sold that on me. Yeah. Not any corporate member will come here and discuss APRC. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. So being the deputy party leader, you deputize the party leader. You should be assigned responsibilities, not for you to pick on yourself and say, I'm going to say this or do this. It doesn't work that way. In any administration, when you deputize, you wait for instructions before you execute. I, 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 there's something that we made mention here, and mm -hmm. it seems I have a problem with that. But yes. A lot of the times, um, OK, like you said, you talked about this. You mentioned this prior to the National Assembly election. And you were like, um, you know, if the way we're going, if we go on our own, yes. if we all go solo, then we wouldn't have the majority. Exactly. And that happened. Um, this was the problem even in 2017 when the coalition government came. Mm -hmm. I quite disagree with a lot of people who were with this notion. Mm -hmm. that, you see, coalition governments or alliances, like you rightly put it, these are formed based on marriage of convenience. Yes. They are for a particular purpose. Mm -hmm. They work best in presidential elections mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you are all putting up one candidate. Yes. Okay? And you can get something from that. Exactly. When you have the so you help a party a candidate win election, president, like it is happening. Mm -hmm. You can be either vice president or speaker of the national assembly or minister or whatever. Yeah. That works best in a presidential election. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to local government election, national assembly election, and that's why I had issues with people. Mm -hmm. I said those who believe that the coalition government towards the 2017 parliamentary election, because the 2017 parliamentary election was never factored out in the coalition agreement, yeah. when mm -hmm. they had that agreement. Yes. They were just focused on the election, the how to remove Jamme, he was the common enemy there. Because they never focused on the, quali on the parliamentary election, it was going to be difficult for them to work together mm -hmm. as one, just like they did in the, parli in the presidential election. But even if they had discussed that, I know they will find it very problematic to go as a coalition. That was the problem that they faced because parties also survive in parliament. Mm -hmm. Parties survive at local level, yes. being councillors, chairpersons. Yeah, it's and very important. Yes. Yeah. So when you want to go into coalition, it creates problems. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, when you go into alliance, even national assembly, I mean, you go into alliance. Okay, is the alliance going to be? Is it that people are going to contest us independence? If they go and contest us independence, then they will not have any loyalty to the party. That's problematic. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing is that if you bring them together, you say, okay. Let's say okay, um, in, in certain areas, APRC will not contest. In certain areas, you know, NPP will not contest. That is also problematic. The reason I know I can tell you that for sure, because you warned the APRC about that, that the way they are also going, you were not happy, I know, when they gave you certain positions, only certain numbers. You contest only seven, I think. Yes, yeah, seven. Seven, and yeah. you won only two. Two, yes. Because that's how you were limited. And I remember I told you in one of the programs, either here or the branch, that I believe that if APRC had tried its chance in other areas, mm -hmm. they probably you will have more than two. It was our belief, too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But you went into that, you accepted. And NPP as a ruling party, and I said this was a mistake on their part, but they had no choice because the marriage was going fine at the time, they cannot also reject the proposal from APRC because they condition APRC to accept only seven. Therefore, the NPP cannot also go beyond the number because they, I think they contested about 40 or 41, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Even the UDP contested, as an opposition, contested more seats mm -hmm. than them yeah, yeah. because of the marriage that they had. Mm -hmm. But I told them before the election, I said, what guarantee do you have that you are going to win all these seats? And they had no guarantee. And that is the problem that they find them, found themselves in. If the NPP had also contested all the seats, probably they would have, they would have had more than 18 seats that they had. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the APRC. It was going to be a test of power. And then this was the problem. So going to the local government elections again, APRC will learn from this. And mm -hmm. I think the reason why you're even talking about contesting or having an interest in the mayoral seat, 
I can say, I don't, I've not heard this from you, <laughs> but I can read your mind yeah. and know that it's because of the experience you had in the parliamentary election. You didn't want a KM and Banjul, all these regions, to fall into the hands of NPP again. That APRC, you believe that you these are your strongholds, especially KM. You believe that this of is your course. stronghold. Indeed, so you yes. cannot allow NPP to take it to take it back. So to take it from you. And this is the reason why you wanted to contest or you sought interest in this seat. And the local government elections coming again. If you people are thinking of an alliance again, it will be problematic. In the sense that you cannot go as independents. If you want to go as party, but okay, to strike what they call, how do you call alliance. it, a tactical alliance, mm -hmm. again, okay, APRC will contest here, then NPP will not contest there, you know, it creates problem. I know local government, I think there are, councillors are up to 120 oh, seats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 120 wards. That's yeah. a bit understandable. Mm -hmm. but, but again, chairmanships and the no, 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 let, let's not get to the chairmanship, but even councillor, because you have to understand that the National Assembly elections, the past parliamentary election, gave a sense of hope to the opposition. Mm -hmm. A lot of people concluded that it was NPP over for them. It, yeah. was, it was over for them. I think you were among the few people who thought that like it was going to be a big 50-50. 50-50. And it ended up being 50-50. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. a lot of people were like, NPP will sweep the polls. In mm -hmm. fact, I, I can tell you that I can confess that I was among the people who thought that if the opposition did not tighten their belt, it was, I never said that they were going to, MPP was going to hands down, but because that's the trend. Yeah. Mostly when the incumbent wins the election, they the also presidential, control yeah. the National Assembly. Yeah. Exactly. But that dynamic is also changing in our politics. And I said if the opposition did not tighten their belt, we could have an do NPP-dominated parliament. But shockingly, the NPP could not have that. And UDP, I can tell you that, a lot of them were not even thinking that they will have more than five seats. Honestly. I've always said this. Honestly. GDC, for them, they did not have any seat. <laughs> but UDP, not many people were thinking that. Mm -hmm. They as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, a lot of people were thinking that, okay, because Halifa said he was not going to contest anymore, That's it, they yeah. will lose all his seats. Mm -hmm. But they came, at least they were able to maintain two, two yeah. and lost two. Mm -hmm. UDP came out with 15. Mm -hmm. I mean, effectively 16, because the other one in Busumbala, yeah, even though officially, yeah. officially is in the Dependent, yeah. it was independent, but, but it's it's UDP, UDP, or no. UDP, yeah. mm -hmm. so, it, so the opposition now mm -hmm. have that hope. If they have lost the, elec the National Assembly election, if the NPP had won landslide, maybe they would have been, their morals would have been just damaged. Yeah. But now they have that sense of hope that, look, we can do this, especially mm -hmm. in this crisis that we are in. A lot of people are frustrated. Some people telling you that, in fact, I voted for Barrow, but I regretted and all that. They're thinking that they still have chance, they still have hope, and they are banking on this, that come local government elections, they want to make sure that they control or they win the majority of seats in the, in the, in the, in the I mean, um, councillor election, councillor seats, but also when it comes to chairpersons and mayors, knowing fully well, they that control, to be honest with you, they control it, the yeah. Banj Banjul and KM, I'm not, I'm maybe not the control, because if you look at the local government election, sorry, the parliamentary election, mm -hmm. Banjul, the NPP did not win any seat. APRC did not win any seat. In fact, APRC did not contest it. No, no, it did not When it comes contest. to the um, KM, KM mm -hmm. NPP no seats. APRC one seat. Two. Two, two seats, sorry. Yeah. Bundung you go to and West Coast. Joshua. Both Bundung and Joshua. You go to and West you Coast, had, no. you know, UDP won the rest together with Doi. Doi had one, and, and, yeah. mm -hmm. and UDP won the rest. You go to West then Coast, you go only to West Coast, one. Coast yeah, only one, one for NPP. One. Yeah. And there, APRC has no seat. It mm -hmm. means the rest went to the independent and opposition. Opposition, that's Coming right. to this local government election, with all due respect, I mean, the candidates, the, the, the UDP in Banjul and, and KM, KM a lot of people feel that they are doing fantastic they are very strong. It's incumbency. Yeah, they're it's incumbency. incumbency. You don't but know the mind. They're they, they also very strong. strong and people candidates. feel like even people that are not within the party, those who don't support UDP are telling you that, well, these two people are doing fantastic job. Mm -hmm. And they might. Mm -hmm. They have the chance. They have the chance. I'm yeah. not saying with certainty because I don't. Now I'm, I'm very careful of predicting government <laughs> elections because they can be so funny. Yeah. But they have the chance. There is high likelihood that they will maintain their position. So it means the NPP and APRC have a lot of job to do. Even at the APRC, to you climb. think uh, that, okay, balance. you have a control of a KM, is your stronghold, but the dynamics are also changing in government politics. So you might have a problem there. I know for URR, NPP will... Hands down. <laughs> hands down. Yeah. CRR, I think. I mean, when you come to West Coast, that's also going to be a problem for the NPP. It will be challenging. Because that's a multi-ethnic multi setting, multicultural setting, you have the UDP have a lot of seats. They there, have a very strong hold. They have a lot yeah. of seats. There, this national assembly election, they're confident that well things can change. The NATO alliance is also there, unless you are able to bring the family together. 
if the father, the father who is out there in Equatorial Guinea, is able to tell the elder son that is Tombong and the second son yeah, that yeah. is um, yeah, yeah, Tamba or Jerendi, <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> yeah, talk Tamba. to them yeah, Tamba. that we are a family. We need to then I think them. you'll be able to pull something in West Coast. It's West Coast if, and if KM. you contest West Coast or NPP contest West Coast and you live in there. But my point here is, the final analysis is, be very cautious of going into this alliance, especially where the future of the party is going to be at stake when it comes to... Con the, for the NPP to limit you again in terms of seats that you contest, mm. don't contest these chairmans in position, local, I mean, councillors also don't contest, that is going to kill the party eventually. And like you know in politics, no permanent friend, no permanent enemy, permanent interest exists. Yes. Tomorrow no one knows where this marriage will end. If, the, if Barrow decides that, you know what, uh, now I'm comfortable in the presidency, I have the support across the country, I don't need the backing of the APRC, so what? You can decide to sack all your people and then you feel this ground and you will like, look, you know, we want to revive the party. Mm -hmm. But already you have lost that grassroots support. And as a politician, somebody who has been in the game for long, you know grassroots politics of in this course. country. Of course Those people know. who will be out there, you know, talking politics <laughs> about at the surface are different from what happens on the ground. Yes. And that's why they get shocked when they get there. So I think with this, APRC also needs to re-strategize and think internally. We're doing that. Internally, how do we approach this alliance? Are we going like the National Assembly election? We had a bad experience. So it's something that you really need to think as, as, as you progress towards the Congress um, come December. Well, all the points you raise are relevant, and we're working towards that direction. Again, like I said, alliance, we all need to come to the table and discuss. In the absence of that, it's going to affect all of us. There's no secret about that. The reason is the dynamics of politics in this country has changed. Yeah. What we did in the presidency was a success. Why do you abandon when you're winning? You don't quit when you're winning. Stick to that and apply SWOT analysis. Know your strength, your weakness, mm. where your opportunities lies, and the technicalities that are needed for you to you know, build onto your past experience, where you have your loopholes, your mistakes, what do you do to build that? And this is what I've been crying on. It's not happening. And if you continue like that, for me, the problem will persist. But I'm not seeing solutions But, today. you know, do you think that, for example, if the alliance continues, it doesn't benefit the smaller parties, it benefits the incumbent? Because the thing is, if you are in a romance, you know, like politically, you are in an alliance and you don't get to, because you are in government as well, right? Mm -hmm. You don't get to organize rallies, you don't get to organize political gatherings that will, you know, energize the base. When elections come, you just have this alliance and you don't get to test your powers in regions. The party is dying naturally because politics is about grassroots games. If you're not doing any of those, you you know, people are recruiting your team. Or the people that are in your team, you are always you are transforming them into NPP because you are always having these unified meetings and they always believe it's the same. It's one and the same. As time goes on, taking those people away from the Neh Nehbi to your party becomes an issue. Do you think this is also going to kill the party gradually? Well, if it continues, yes. I'll have to be honest with my understanding of politics. Yeah. Not maybe absolutely dead, but, but the strength and the weight of the party will no more be there. Yeah. You know, nobody can dispute this. If you want to be at its peak, you must work for it. Yeah. In the absence of that politics, there's nothing stagnant. It depends on your strategies, your way, to, your way through, uh, how you do your mobilization, how you motivate and encourage your people. This is what keeps you going and you get the numbers. In the absence of that, you can say all sweet words, but the result, the end result is not coming. Yeah. Now, coming to most of these smaller parties, I think laws in this country need to be looked into mm. uh, and some review needs to be done. Yeah. In other countries, yeah. as a political party, you have to contest. Yeah. Two executive, two consecutive elections, they will deregister you if you don't put up candidates. Yeah. This is why we have 19 political parties now. Yeah. I'm counting. Two more are processing. 21, we might end up having 40 political <laughs> parties. Nobody will contest, you will be into alliance and keep looking for position. Again, that is polarizing yeah. our, our political, political system case. in this country. Yeah. It's not helping it's at not all. Helping. At some point in time, politics will be very dormant in this country. Is it because people will lose is interest. It because now people, people are looking at politics as the new venture of making money? Because it is absolutely party, the fact. You set up your party, 
you just go pay one million and IEC, but you know when you go and join the alliance, mm. you know you 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 are well, rewarded for a position financially. Company. Yeah, that's what financially IEC is benefiting. Yeah, you know, but when it comes to effectiveness, it will just be many political parties and only few will contest. What's the essence I of think, forming I political think, parties? For me, the 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 problem is with the IEC. Exactly. I've said they, this. They're the referees the and the regulators. Fit to handle this job, let the entire commissioners resign. Oh. Starting with the, 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 how they call it? Chairman. The chairman. I cannot just imagine 21st century, we're talking about laws need to be respected in this country. Exactly. The IEC came out last week or so to tell us that there are political parties that are not abiding by the Electoral Act. It's a fact. Clearly. That's no secret. And then you... Some don't even so have regional offices. You, you yeah. And the law that. says you Why must provide for it. You register now. these parties. Yeah. You're allowing them to operate. And on top of that, you're allowing other parties to register. Some don't even have national bureaus. All their work yeah. is in their houses. In their houses. And that is why they cannot even put up candidates because they don't even have a proper they have no structure. In place. They, yeah. have, they don't have structure. That's the absolute reality. And we cannot seen sugarcoat it. I've seen it as a, like you said, not only money making. But people just want to get attention overnight. Yes. Just for a few periods. Yes. There are people who became fame in this country for 30 minutes <laughs> when they went to the, 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 the um, nomination. Yeah. We saw that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And then you don't see seriousness in our, in our politics. And that is why we need to, like you said, I entirely agree with you. It will be boring. We need to strengthen our, our, our laws. Yeah. And to the point, people will lose interest. Of course. In the sense that you see every Tom Dick and Harry can come and say, I want to set up a political party. And they are telling us that we want to come with politics, the difference. I mean, I've seen parties here said, we are with politics with a difference. But politics with a difference in what sense? Mm. Now, I take a typical example. CA. CA went to NPP. You said politics with a difference. The politics that has been happening, the old politics in this country has been form an alliance or be co-opted. You don't call it so. Jawara co-opted people in this country. Political mm -hmm. co-optation, mm -hmm. political patronage. Jawara mm -hmm. did that in this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jame came and did it. Mm -hmm. He did it to the late Sirif Diba. Yeah. He did it to the late Lamin Wajwa. Yeah. Then yeah. you come to the Baro era. <laughs> well, you went to Baro, you have been co-opted. Mm -hmm. That's technically it. You are telling us that old, the new style of politics is the old style of politics. You are not bringing anything new. So unless and until political parties, people that go into politics, see this as a matter of principle because there is principle in politics that's what we call principle politics and people must understand that this is different from shifting alliance or friendship in politics this is different from that here yeah, in the sense that when you are into politics you have a principle if Duruja believes that Barrow is not the right person for this job and he's the right person for that job why should Duruja change that principle why should you come today and say, no, I think Barrow is now the right person for the job, or Barrow is, I'm not the right person for Maybe the job? Maybe because Barrow has changed. That's now. A no, 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 that's a matter of principle. That is why there have been <laughs> political parties in this country and politicians that have been principal. I call them principal politicians. They have been here since the First Republic. Today, if people want to point at principal politicians, the first person they point to is Halifa and the crew. That you look at these people, at some point they have never compromised their integrity. They've never gone into to say, okay, I mean, we just have to form this because of, I mean, no, you have to have principle at some point. What I'm saying is that the reason why I raise this issue is that a lot of people, I've seen a lot of politicians in this country, especially towards the December election. You said you want to, you want to contest, you want to be an opposition. The reason why you come in as an opposition is because you must have studied the incumbent and realize that their programs, their policies are not fit for purpose, they cannot address our problems. And then as an opposition, you are coming with alternative. That is what oppositions do. In every serious political setup, oppositions are there to provide the alternative, to say, well, I think the government is not doing the right thing. We are coming with an alternative. And you must stick to that alternative. But what I see is that people came and said, we want to be opposition, we want to fix this country, we want to do this, we want to build wall we want to we want there should be vitamin c in this country you said all sort of things <laughs> and then all of a sudden you come and say my vision aligns with that of the president's vision when <laughs> has that changed well, it's again, that we have people that are not serious with us well again it, 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 it goes back to the laws the electoral laws that is where i am I think, emphasizing I think, yeah, I think because is. like like i am saying we have 
political parties in this country who don't even have national bureaus, yes. talk less of regional bureaus. Regional. Some of them, they don't even have a complete executive Some people, structure. They, they and their wives are the only members of their executives. So. It, it, is, it is not happening again. What is the IEC doing about it? I mean, it boils that is the, the question IEC. that we need to ask here. Awesome. Politics should be something serious. serious. It should not be business oriented or an enterprise. Yeah. But it is happening in this country. I am not against any party. It's everybody's right to put up a party, but meet the criteria and uh, fulfill what the law is requesting from you. This is what we are asking. Go to Women's Bureau. The statistics are there. They will tell you how many political parties are abiding by these laws, and they are meeting the criteria of the Electoral Act. They have the data. The because records are there. We have only two political parties that had said that they will hold Congress in December. It was only when the IEC came out that NPP also said, yeah, we are holding Congress. But it was only UDP and APRC. But they must. This yeah, is mandatory. But that's what I'm saying. Biennial a Congress. Lot of, a lot of other parties are still silent. They will. They don't about, if about they, they don't, parties, if they, they don't, no, they now is the responsibility of the IEC. They the can even parties, be registered. A lot of the bigger parties do organize Congress. Even the smaller the parties year. have to. They have if to. you've been in existence for a some, period of two years, you must. That some smaller parties might die in natural death. I mean... Yeah, you, you're talking it's, about... It's, it's, inevitable it's inevitable because it's the way they are politicking. It's inevitable. Look at certain political parties for example, that, are even, that are even in the, in the, um, in the, co in the coalition government. No, for mm. me, look, look at, at parties like PPP. You no. don't have a seat in parliament. Do they have a seat in parliament? No. They don't have a seat in parliament. You don't have any position in the, in the executive. No, for me, let me tell you, the reason even, why I say They are not this. even holding rallies, even NRP. That's what I was going to look, look at NRP, no, for example. Rally. No, look at M NRP. The only reason M NRP is getting, Ahmad Ba is my friend, so let me just make this. <laughs> He's my friend. He's but, my friend. Look. Yeah, but the only reason why NRP is getting it's anybody because is because they're in government. Now, today, I remember this. In 2018, when we interviewed Ahmad Ba, and when the you know when UDP members started throwing stone at Baro at political rallies, right? Mm -hmm. Ahmad, when we interviewed, he said, "Do my neck ngur the halad ngurge," and meaning you cannot be in government and saying stuff about government. And, and I said, "But as a political party, then your party is going to die if you are not doing any political party." Ahmad is the only political party that time who was in government and never organized any political activities because he, he believes he was in government, right? And he said it openly. That but he, now for them, they are not contesting anything. They are not. They Five, now it's going to be ten years. Ten years, no political activity apart from going to Congress, then campaign your seat. You join with NRP, uh, NPP, and organize and just get your four seats or so. For how long is that sustainable? And as I can a tell party? you that. I can tell you that. That is very. They got that four I mean, seat because Hamad is in the executive in the yeah. cabinet. If Ham, because of the influence, yeah, the but if not, of influence. if Hamad is not in cabinet, it's very dangerous politically. It's very dangerous probably, politically. Probably, anyway. Yeah, yeah, I, like Fabakari right now, Fabakari doesn't say anything. Fabakari does speaker, speaker, he doesn't say. Well, no, Fabakari, <laughs> you know, she's my mom. She's the what, national secretary, like general secretary. General secretary. She's my mom. She's a good politician. But now, they doesn't say anything about government. Even if the country is coming down, APRC will not say anything because they are part of the government, right? No, not 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 actually. No, technically, you are part of the government. Y yes, we are. Not yes, not even technically, yes, we are part of the government. We are part of the government. You say something, Rambo. You say something to Bara. Rambo <laughs> releases an audio. Go, <laughs> Rambo Yara. Tell. Let me ask you this question. Is Rambo uh, appointed to the foreign service? Yes, he is. He's going to South Africa. Is he gone on? Because because today. Uh, he's still around, but now, he's he's preparing to leave. No, the reason why I ask this question is this, Dudu. When we had the confirmation that Rambo was appointed, Kerfatu wrote it. And Rambo came out. Fake news. They are lying. They are lying. Yeah, they are lying. Uh, that was every, tactical. Every single day he keeps on telling us fake news. So I just wanted to confirm that he is going to the no, he's, he's, he's appointed and he's almost on the verge of leaving very soon. Good. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy soon, that he's going to the diplomatic service. Yeah, so you can, can start, you, you can so get can in touch so that you can go for holidays in South So Africa. he can start throwing stones at people. You know, he's your friend. You <laughs> he was my husband, actually. <laughs> Thanks to his my sister. Well, yes, but, yeah, you have to pay him a visit. I will definitely do that. Mm. But finally, Dudu, are you going to contest for the KMC seat? Are you still on course for that? Yes, I'm still on course, and we're still working about it. People keep asking. Uh, like I always say, uh, for politics, to be honest, I'm not afraid to be in politics. I know what I'm doing, and I can do it very well. This I can tell you. Well, you need to take your time. Yeah. When people approach you and say, we want you to contest, if you say no outright, you're going to say that. 
you you damaging your political career. Yeah. You cannot also just jump out and go everywhere and tell people I'm contesting. There are requirements, there are issues and things you need, finance, etc. Yeah. If you don't have it, you cannot continue to contest. Mm -hmm. In the 11th hour, you tell people I'm no more contesting. You're again killing your political career. I am being very tactical, I am taking my time, but I am still in it and I am doing the needful until the time comes, then I will be able to finalize. But I am still in it. Still on course. Yes. Thank you very much, Dure. Esa, program of the final message. I don't think I have a final message. Okay. <laughs> then an advice. Then an, 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 an advice. Yes. Uh, what I can advise is, um, I, I think last week I. No, it wasn't last week. It was in another media engagement. Sometimes I forget the media engagements can be too yeah. dirty. But I mean, just about what I was saying in another engagement, um, we need democracy to be strengthening at the internal level mm -hmm. of course. The political party. Of yeah. course. Um, and also, it's time that you know the leadership of these political parties try to work on their successor. If you look at the leaders of these parties, some of them, I wouldn't say most of them, but some of them, are aging um, and they have to at some point give way for others to come in and so it's important that you work on that because a lot of them or some of them are even afraid um, that when they hold congress it might create a bit of tension mm -hmm. uh, within the parties because of i mean leadership issues opposition issues and all that but at the end of the day um, as a leader for you to succeed you must be able to also build that sense of mutuality with your followers and mm. also try to get a success on that even if you're not there somebody is able to build on what you have started yeah and then you know move forward the party because the party must not revolve around an individual that's what happens in this country political parties revolve around individuals you look at aprc yeah jame not here then tension within the party mm -hmm. you're talking about i mean udp if Dabo is not there, okay. UDP, you are thinking that it may not exist. NPP, if Baro is not there, it may not exist. Hamad Ba, there are a lot of political parties. So we need to move away from the personality and try to center the party around the people that make it up and also center it around the country that it belongs to the people. But the internal democracy needs to be strengthened at this level. Sometimes I see these congresses as just formalities. Yeah. <laughs> Already somebody is there. Everybody knows that this person will be there. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the congress, it's like the same thing is happening. Yeah. Nobody is even willing to come out and challenge. Even if they challenge, they just want it to be for formality's sake, um, so that you know somebody will say, okay, at least the media will cover. Yeah, somebody challenged somebody, but at least you know the people voted this way. But these are formalities. But yeah. what we're interested here is that that internal democracy really needs to be strengthened. Yeah. I know, yes, some political parties have it, but it for that needs to be strengthened, and that's something that the APRC also needs to work on. Yeah. Well, with really? regards to bringing the family together. You can talk to the dad. The father is in the pictorial. Yes, you need to. I don't know how he will. He will. The eldest. Well, the eldest daughter is in is in South Africa. South Africa. As a That's so her mom. I don't know how he will be able to. <laughs> she might facilitate. She, 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 she I don't facilitate. know how he will be able to do that. But that's that's, that's politics. Fine. You see it's, how you go about with that. Yeah. We will work so, on it. So my thing with um, I think I agree with Esa on um, internal democracy in parties. Parties are government in waiting. Yes. APRC want to go back to the state house. UDP wants to go. Doi, I think every other party. Mm -hmm. Want to go to uh, to to um, to the state house? I I do have one issue with our Gambian politics, that is age discrimination. <laughs> when people always say, "Ah, oh, kid of a market trap, what a naked leader," I have a problem no, with no. that. Mm. Let me okay, finish. You, finished, I have a problem with that because I I look at this. Um, you know, you know, there was a time people said not too young to run. Mm -hmm. We wanted to encourage young people to run for political office because they need to learn. Because there was a time in this country, young people don't get into politics. The educated don't enter political work. Because we were in dictatorship. Now, when changes happen, people had interest. Now you see the educated people coming into politics. The young people try to run, but. You know, we are also in a rush to elbow the elderly people. And I believe in something. I've said this, and I've said it. My friend Usman is watching, and he's going to say, you, you know, you're crazy. <laughs> I say this. President Biden, for me, is the best president ever elected in America. Ooh. He passed the most progressive <laughs> laws yeah. in the U.S. Let me say why I believe. For, mm -hmm. for me, he passed the climate change uh, uh, bill in, in the U.S. Mm. He made sure he sent money to people when there was, uh, you know, to make sure. These were tough decisions that... Um, the Republicans and other governments will not even touch. 
the the, uh, the, 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 the marijuana laws and others, he was the one who passed it, <laughs> the gun laws, all these things that even um, uh, by, um, even J J President B Barack Obama, who was a black president, was scared to take on black issues. Biden was the one who did it. He was the first vice president to the first black president. He appointed, the he nominated the first black woman vice president, black, to be his vice president. He appointed the first, selected the first uh, Supreme Court ever black judge. woman to be in the bench. He is very progressive. Student debt relief for students that are owing a lot of money. These are very, very progressive things, climate change and others. And no president dare touch some of these things because you were scared of all the backlash and others. He did all of that. He is what? The American no, politics next president, is, is, he is very going different. To, let me tell you, yeah. in the next election, he just said yesterday he's going to run. He's going to be 82. It's not about the age. It's about no. the effectiveness of the person. It is Look at Donald Trump. Compared to us Donald here. Trump is 74. He's going to run next election. No, I'm, you go to other countries. It's the, it's the elderly <laughs> people. Pardon, pardon, so I, I don't believe in no, no, discrimination. No, no. I, 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 you're comparing if you, if you apple and orange. No, yeah. Ageism. Ages, ages if now. you again, discriminate against me, I'm going to be hurt. Because you're telling me I'm too young to get this father, position. Father, father, so I, think, I think there's I a problem think, here. No, I think there's I mean, a problem. was president when he no, was no, I think there's a problem here. I don't, there's I a problem in, here. I don't believe in now, age discrimination. What, is the, what is the minimum age for someone to contest election in this country? It's 30, right? Yeah, presidency. Presidency, presidency, yes. Presidency is 30. Yeah. Yeah. Now, but you have from 18 to 29, you can still vote. Yes. 18 years. Yes. yes. If you said 74 or whatever is discriminatory, those that have the right to vote can also say the age lim minimum age of 30 is also discriminatory yeah. because it, we have the potential. But it's not in our laws right now. It is. It's not in our laws right now. No, what I mean the age yeah, is removed now. No, so no, 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 no. What I'm saying it's is, been removed now. No, it's not only about the law, yeah. but also about the mindset. Here, a lot of people will tell you that somebody 22, 23, 25 cannot lead the country. Yeah. That's a mindset. I don't that we believe have. in that. No, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm just coming yeah. because it used to And again, the law it. says that. I'm yeah. not necessarily saying that those that are at certain age or old age or whatever should not contest. Yeah. It depends on when the government people. Mm -hmm. Whether they want to give the, the mandate or, mm -hmm. or not, yeah. but it all, it all depends on give them the, the opportunity and yeah. the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I know, we know you have to also understand that the society that you are comparing us to it's is very different. different. Exactly. Let's talk now about I'm Senegal. Now I'm coming. I'm like what? Yeah, just what he has done in Senegal, no president has army. ever done. I quite agree. You, you agree with that? I quite agree. What? Yes. What he has done in Senegal, of course. no you, president you has ever done. He gave them democracy. What age did he come to the presidency? I don't know. I think we are closing. This, but no, we are reopening no. this now. <laughs> what I'm saying yes, is provoke that, another discussion. What I'm saying is that yes. now you see, you go to the US, mm -hmm. you've been to the UK, you were living there. Yeah. You see, when you see a 90 year old man or woman, yeah, and an 80 year old woman, you compare that mm -hmm. with a 60 or 70 year old person in the Gambia. It's not this. You see the difference. But I'm giving you like, what I said. Nah, that's what I'm coming to. Just allow me. Why live a greater see, part of his life in France? Fadu, Fadu, you go, you go. 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 You Resourceful. Topic for another day. No, 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 at some point, it's not only about the age. When yeah. I say aging here, so yeah. my aging, mm -hmm. is that at some point, yeah. Yeah, they cannot be leading these parties forever. Exactly. They will have to go. That is and a that's fact. what I mean by aging. I'm yeah. not saying that when they are 74, 78, 80, they cannot contest. Mm -hmm. That depends on the party. That depends mm -hmm. on the government. They people. can. But you can't be there far point, too long. They have to go. Biden came and just yesterday. We cannot have no. one person. <laughs> Biden has been in office since 20, he was 29. No, no I mean about the presidency. Yeah, leading these parties forever. He has no. always been a leader in the United States. They cannot be there forever. Mm -hmm. We cannot inculcate or develop that culture mm -hmm. where one person will
lead a party forever. And you don't know yeah, when he or she is going to step when aside. They, when they leave those parties, there's a leadership crisis. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. In my home, until my father dies, no, I'm not no, 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 That's not politics. That's not politics. Let me finish. No, no, no. You're not finishing. This one I have to address. Let me finish. Even if your house doo-doo, your father gets to a certain age, no. yeah. hands over responsibility. Of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. Because Kevin said, he's retired, he's relaxing, and the kids will be. Of course. Oh, yeah. I'm in my house. She knows better. She knows better. I'm in my own house, yeah. right? My father dictates everything that happens in my house. So this is how yeah. we do it. Dictating, <laughs> dictating and fulfilling responsibilities are do. different. Okay, yeah. let's close it now. Yes, Finally, you know, I wanted to ask Dudu. Oh, my God. Every single day. Finally, Dudu. No, seriously. Seriously. I got, let me before you come, there's inflation in this country. So you can have three million in your pocket. No, no, right three million. No, no. You can have three million in your pocket. No, well, no. well. Let me just clarify this. Yeah. I would be very naive and selfish yeah. if I'm giving three million and I'm still renting. Hey. I'll be very <laughs> foolish, I would call it. If you give me three million, the first thing I'm going to think about is to have a compound of my of own. Of course. Yeah. I have lands that I own, yeah. but not a finished compound. Where did I put that three million? Ah, no, when was it given to you? It was given to you. I never received. I never received any three million. No, but it was given to you last week. You cannot finish it today. So it depends on when you. These are all allegations. <laughs> These are all allegations. People are saying, well, you know, people have the notion that when you're into politics, yeah, people call sorry. me and tell me, you know, brown envelopes. I talk are uh, talking. I said no. I want white envelopes. But you're, you're, you're white brown, brown, by the way. Maybe you have the black envelopes. <laughs> it's yellow I'm not receiving none of that. You know, it's the mindset that people yeah, have politically. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll be very happy if I receive three million because I know I will help a lot of Gambians. People, yeah. With oh. the little resources I have, yeah. I am helping a lot of people. And others can attest to it. I will not say what I do for people. Yeah. So with three million, it will increase the level of support I will give to people. Yeah. Including me. Including us. Uh, don't everybody don't close to me. About us. <laughs> Unless you are content and said you don't need don't you know, anything from the three million. I'm always happy to give. Yeah, thank you very yeah. much, Dudu. Thank you, Esa. Uh, we always appreciate having you on the show. It's I've always said it. Dudu is my favorite. <laughs> APRC politician, favorite ever. Baxo? No, no, no. Baxo refused to come. Baxo, go. You know what Baxo said? For me to come, the other day I wore go to his um, house. a yellow. No, I wore a yellow shirt, right? Mm. He was all over and he said to be to be right. No, but yellow is beautiful. For me, yellow is just a color. I interview. I'm a green He said he wants me to wear. So he's conditioning you. And then put a picture. That would be nice. But I won't want to say this is not original. Baxo is Baxo. And he'll always be the general. On my show. Because it will be important to have Baxo. Well, go to his house. He'll be more than willing to give. I will go there. Because Baxo will audio release or theater. Somebody needs to talk to him. I have to want to And his interviews are always unique. You'll speak. English, Mandinka, and Adwala. He's the best when it comes to that. Not only English, but somehow. Thank you very much. We'll be blending it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Esa. Thank you, Mustafa, Sire, and Charles. Good night to you all. See you next week, inshallah, with another political party, or we will have the IEC. Either or. So, thank you. See you next week. Bye-bye. better and stronger as the sole ground operator at the Banjul International Airport. With an expansion in travel services, customers are assured of GIA's capacity to cater for all their travel needs provided by professional, experienced and ever-smiling staff. GIA's Hajj package and services by far the best in the country give the customers the opportunity for a memorable Hajj experience. For a more efficient cargo services, GIA means business as it launches its new multi-million dollar ultra-modern cargo complex to revitalize and stimulate air transport. GIA, the pride of the Gambia. Every day is a new opportunity to make sure our first impressions are always our best and to see possibilities on the horizon. To make our facilities and services more accessible and find freedom all around us. With a location proximity to active markets with a liberal air transportation policy. That daily pursuit is how we turn everyday opportunities for you. 
For all destination marketing support, customized packages for new existing airlines and operators, and for a highly ranked tourist destination, the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority is here to serve. We regulate air transport, operate and manage BIA technical requirements, merge with commercial considerations. We have experienced and well-trained aviation professionals to cater for your needs. For investment opportunities in building airport hotels, shopping malls, playground for children, do contact us on 4472-831, 4472-893. Gambia Civil Aviation Authority. We go beyond daily. Thank you.